Hello, and welcome back to A History of Crime, where today we're diving back into the mysterious world of Jack the Ripper suspect. As we stroll through the gaslit streets of 19th century Whitechapel, our focus today turns to Charles Allen Lechmere. Now, you might be wondering, why is this man even a suspect? After all, he was among the first to discover Murray Ann Nichols' body, along with another man, Robert Paul. But hold on, it's not just the discovery that raises eyebrows. There's a wealth of circumstantial evidence. Evidence that implies guilt, but doesn't prove it, that casts Lechmere in a rather suspicious light. But let's start with what I find to be the most compelling clue. Charles Allen Lechmere identified himself to the police as Charles A. Cross, which was actually his stepfather's last name. Now, if you're an innocent man, simply going about your day, what could possibly compel you to give a false name to the authorities? Intrigued? Good. Let's explore more into the life of this man with two names and explore whether he could be indeed the infamous Whitechapel murderer. Charles Allen Lechmere was born in 1849, St. Anne's, Soho. He was the son of John Allen Lechmere and Marie Louise Rolson, who married in 1846 in Hereford. The family hailed from Herefordshire and included one sister named Emily, who was three years older than Charles. In 1858, his mother remarried to Thomas Cross, a police constable, and moved to Whitechapel. This raises an interesting question. How did having a police constable as a stepfather impact Charles Allen Lechmere's life? Especially when you consider that he used his stepfather's name during a murder inquiry. The influence of his stepfather's occupation on his life choices could be significant. The name Charles Cross wasn't an alias, but rather his stepfather's surname. Charles adopted this name in one census and reverted to Lechmere in the subsequent records. Charles was a cartman by profession, and in 1871 he married Elizabeth Bostock, and they had several children. Census records from various years show the family living in different parts of London, including Mile End and St George East. By 1911, Charles was running a general shop and dealing in sweet stuff. This transition prompts us to consider what led Charles to shift from being a cartman to running a general shop in later life. Was it a matter of opportunity, necessity or something else? Charles Allen Lechmere passed away in 1920 at the age of 71. His wife Elizabeth survived him living until 1940. She is buried in Bow Cemetery. Additional notes reveal that Charles' mother, Mary Louise, was widowed in 1871 and remarried in 1872 to Joseph Forsdyke. In the 1911 census, Charles and Elizabeth were listed as having been married for 40 years, with 11 children, nine of whom were still living. This leads us to ponder the family dynamic, especially in the context of the times they lived in. With multiple marriages and children, how did the family navigate their relationships and responsibilities? On the 31st of August, 1888, Mary Ann Nichols, also known as Polly, was found dead in Bucks Row, Whitechapel. Charles Allen Lechmere was one of the first people to discover her body. According to Lechmere, he was on his way to work and had left his home around 3.20 to 3.30 a.m. He came across Nichols' body, lying across a gateway. Robert Paul, a passerby, joined him shortly after. Both men initially thought Nichols had been intimately assaulted and possibly fainted, as her skirts were pulled up and her legs extended. However, Lechmere quickly concluded that she was dead. Lechmere's behaviour and statements have been considered suspicious for several reasons. First, his account of the time he left home varied. Some records suggest he left home at 3.30, while others indicate 3.20 a.m. This discrepancy could potentially give him more time alone with Nichols' body before Paul arrived. Second, Lechmere used an alias, Charles Cross, and was initially reluctant to give his home address. He would later provide it as 22 Doveton Street, Cambridge Road. Third, Lechmere spent a considerable amount of time at the crime scene without raising an alarm. He also expressed a desire to move Nichols' body, which Paul found odd and refused. Fourth, Lechmere did not present himself to the inquest until after Robert Paul's interview was published, despite being a key witness. Lastly, Lechmere and Paul's accounts of the discovery differ, particularly concerning their positions relative to the body and the street. Various theories and speculations have been put forth. One theory suggests that Lechmere could have been the killer. He might have solicited Nichols for intimate services, then killed her. The time he spent at the scene, without raising an alarm, 
and his reluctance to provide personal information add to this suspicion. Another far-fetched theory suggests that both men could have been in league with each other, although this is considered unlikely. A less sinister view persists that Lechmere simply happened upon the body and his odd behaviour could be attributed to the shock or fear of being implicated. Questions arise such as why did Lechmere use an alias and initially withhold his address? Could this be indicative of something more sinister or was it merely a precautionary measure given the circumstances? How significant is the time disparity in Lechmere's account? Could those extra minutes have allowed him to commit the crime? Given the inconsistencies between Lechmere and Paul's accounts, how reliable is Lechmere as a witness? Could these inconsistencies be chalked up to the chaos and the confusion of the moment, or do these point to a deeper involvement in the crime? Charles Allen Lechmere, also known as Charles Cross, did provide his address at the inquest into the death of Murray Ann Nichols, contrary to some beliefs. His address was recorded as 22 Doverton Street, Cambridge Road, in the Star newspaper on Monday, September the 3rd, 1888. This contradicts the notion that he was reluctant to give his home address. Additionally, Lechmere claimed to have left for work at 20 minutes past three in the morning, not half past three as other records suggest. This discrepancy could be due to errors in the court record or Star newspaper. Lechmere was at Buck's Row where Murray Ann Nichols' body was found for between 10 and 20 minutes before Robert Paul arrived. He did not raise the alarm during this time, which has led to suspicions about his behaviour. He was also hesitant to provide his correct name and address at the inquest. There are inconsistencies between Lechmere and Robert Paul's accounts of discovering Nichols' body. Lechmere's behaviour, such as his reluctance to provide his address and correct name, as well as his delay in presenting himself at the inquest, has led to various theories about his involvement in the case. As for Murray Ann Nichols herself, the inquest into her death returned a verdict of willful murder against an unknown person or persons. Her body was found laying across a gateway in Buck's Row. It was so dark that her body was initially mistaken for a tarpaulin, and blood was not visible. According to Dr Llewellyn, who had just arrived at the scene, Nichols had just died or may have still been alive when Robert Paul examined her. This is a complex case with multiple layers of intrigue especially concerning Alan Lechmere's role and behaviour. The inquest records, newspaper accounts and subsequent theories all add to the enigma surrounding events that fateful night. Lechmere was present at the crime scene before anyone else and the timing of his walk to work coincided with the estimated time of Nichols' death. He had been alone in Buck's Row for at least 10 minutes before another man, Robert Paul, arrived. Lechmere gave conflicting accounts of his actions and timing, for example, he initially stated that he left work for half past three in the morning, but later reports suggest it might have been twenty past three. This discrepancy could give him more time at the crime scene. Lechmere used an alias, Charles Cross, during the inquest into Nichols' death and was initially reluctant to give his home address. This led some to question, if he had done nothing wrong, why did he use an alias? Lechmere waited by Nichols' body without raising the alarm. He also suggested moving the body, a notion that Robert Paul found odd and refused to comply with. Lechmere did not present himself to the inquest until the day after Robert Paul's interview appeared in large weekly newspaper, raising suspicions about his intentions. Lechmere willingly testified at the inquest and cooperated with the police. He did eventually provide his address, which was recorded as 22 Doverton Street, Cambridge Road. All the evidence against Lechmere is circumstantial. There is no direct evidence linking him to the murder or any of the other Ripper killings. Lechmere was not a person of interest during the initial investigations and is only through modern day scrutiny that he has become a suspect. This could imply that contemporary investigators did not find him suspicious. The Star newspaper reported that Lechmere did in fact provide his address during the inquest contradicting the belief that he was reluctant to do so.